What would you say are the, the three lessons you've learned the most from him, from working with Jimmy and being friends with him and um, watching the, his career? And the, the number one lesson I've learned for him, from him is when you make yourself of, of service for other people, you end up getting paid back sort of tenfold and it's and but i don't mean cosmically i just mean you know jimmy stuck his neck out for me he helped me he would show up at you know four in the morning with the radio station and help edit a bit i was doing or something like that he was very magnanimous very magnanimous but at some point i took over for howard stern i signed a big radio deal Jimmy was a producer and Jimmy was making hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, mailbox money. And it's like, oh yeah, you did get, you did make some money. I mean, we're still not even. (laughs) I owe him a lot more money, but he invested this time and it wasn't, he did it because he believed in me. Or who, whatever he believes it, you know, he didn't do it for the money, but he put the time in and there was a payday after, after that. And, and, and it's about relationships and, and the people I know who give the least have the least, the people I know that are the most tight fisted with not so much money, but their time, time and teaching and mentorship and access and resources. I think about the people mostly family members of mine who've done nothing for anybody else and have nothing. And then there's Jimmy who does everything for everyone else and has everything. Wow. And, and I realize, well, how's this work? Cause it's not like, oh, I lend everyone a hundred dollars or I give everyone a hundred dollars. So I'm rich. How does it work? And it's like, oh, it's all relationships. It's all relationships. Wow. So that's a big lesson you've learned from him. What's what's another lesson that you've either witnessed or he's taught you directly or indirectly, would you say? Um, I've learned a lot about pizza. <laughs> yes. He really be, the first gift I ever got him was a pizza stone for his oven. Okay. And he started building elaborate pizza ovens. So a lot of it's sort of pizza related. Okay. Um, I've learned that show business and in comedy is sort of part your God-given sense of humor and ability, but it's mostly about whatever qualities you would need to succeed in the roofing or siding business or whatever. It's just Jimmy, Jimmy is not the most naturally gifted comedic mind I've ever met, which sounds like I'm, you know, downplaying it. I'm, I'm not. He's a Jimmy's a funny dude, but but I, there's a lot of funny guys. He brings the work ethic to the comedy. Really, a lot of comedians like to you know rip on loads and you know go to brunch and sort of hang out. Like like a lot of comedians were attracted to comedy because they didn't want to work. And they just were like, and there are a lot of those comedians, like they're hanging out during the day. Jimmy's at work. Like Jimmy was always at work. He he was at the, you know, radio station at five in the morning. You know, when we're doing the man show, he's bringing home a stack of writers submissions and reading every one of them and everything. It's like what you can do with ability when that ability meets strong work ethic, you can conquer the world. Um, each one alone is not really going to cut it in show business or comedy. Right. You've probably seen a ton of comedians at stand up over the years who are probably really funny. Like you're like, wow, that was creative that was you know a genius thing or you really had the timing down or whatever you were working the crowd and they were in it in the pocket but they didn't have the work ethic to actually follow through and produce something or build the right relationships to make things happen you've probably seen a lot of funny people right 
talented, funny people that didn't make it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's, you need, I mean, you know, it helps to be semi-sober and not, you know, go off the rails with, you know, cocaine or whatever. I mean, it, there's a, there's, there's sort of mitigating factors and circumstances, but, you know, not pissing people off, not being flaky, say doing what you said you were going to do being kind of dutiful showing up like having people be able to count on you to be there right not being take a diva care of business yeah. not being a diva not and, being a diva like you on a wednesday so you know, so half the, uh, <laughs> I'm i need a fresh coffee <laughs> mm. so that kind of a work work ethic which which he has a very strong he has a kind of a accountants like work ethic with a sort of artist mind that's cool you know what i mean and if you you put those together uh you got a you got a pretty winning combination that's amazing how long were you guys working on the man show for because that was a big show for a while uh we did four seasons maybe a hundred something episode hundred a little over a hundred episodes i think something wow. like that You've done a lot of projects together. You've been so. What's it been? Thirty years, like working with him and knowing him and helping each other and just being in the business together. Well, yeah, it's it's easy for me because I was going to turn thirty, so I know I have a marker where I met Jimmy because I'm always bad at. Eh, what did I do? It's like you know, <laughs> I I like. I would say to Doctor Who, when did I start Love Line? Was that ninety five? No, ninety six or whatever. I'd be like, yeah, when when was it? Uh, like, I I I'm not a marker of time, but because I was so consumed with turning thirty and not getting anywhere, I I met Jimmy right when I was turning thirty, and I'm fifty nine now. So wow, I, it'll be thirty years. Thirty years, three decades. Wow, com coming up. Where do you think you'd be if you didn't show up to that radio station that day? Um, I mean, is, is Kevin and Bean put it, as I'm working on a K-Rock documentary, they're like, you know, Adam was so funny. He would have ended up somewhere doing something. Again, I'm, I'm trying to sound like a swipe, but they were like, he's super like the funniest guy I've ever met. So he would have figured in Jimmy the same way. Like he wasn't going to stay there at K-Rock doing the sports for another 25 years he would have been on to something i would have been on to something too god knows when i mean i don't know when or where i don't know if i would have I, I mean i'm a kind of a strong believer in i i may have i would have found my way into radio it's some way somehow because i was so interested in it and always kind of circling around it thinking about it a lot it's interesting um, though, because if you maybe you turn thirty and then thirty one and two, if you haven't had anything yet, you might have been like, you know what, I'm just gonna go full time in a carpentry or boxing or whatever it is. Yeah, I was, I was like, I just wouldn't commit to not trying to do something creative. Yeah. I, I was told, I used to pull up to the job site with my crappy pickup truck, you know, and and I remember periodically like every couple of years some guy had a new truck you uh -huh. know and, and if you had a new truck that was that was a big deal you'd pull it up in that new truck because everyone was driving beaters old you know stuff. And i'd buy my stuff out of the recycler you know old dotsons you know 79 you know miniature little japanese trucks and stuff and i i remember a guy named jan it's about my age, only a couple of years older. So four minutes job. He come fold up this new Ford Ranger, you know, and V6. And it was like, oh, crew cab, you know, whatever. And I was like, wow, sweet. Yeah. And he was like, went down to, you know, Gallup and Ford and it's, you know, 289 bucks a month. It's like, but you have to have full coverage insurance. Like if you're making payments and stuff. And he's like, yeah. And I was like, he's like, you should go get a truck, get a nice truck get a new truck and i was like I, I, if i commit to that then i'm, I'm not going to be able to you know i got to take my groundlings classes I I it, do all my other stuff i i don't want to get if i get committed to this pain then i have to get my contractor's license and you're getting your contractor's license and everyone's like get your contractor's license and start making some money and get a new truck and i was like 
I'm going to get sucked into this thing. I'm going to have bills. And then this is what I'll be doing. Right. Like full time. Wow. And I'm not going to be able to take off and go do this class or do this thing or do whatever. So I, I always kind of knew it. Like I just, I, I don't want to commit to this and I want to, I want to commit to comedy, but I know it's not a high percentage thing and I, I don't know no one's in it, but I just feel like I'm, I'll find a way if I just wow. keep walking forward, I'll find something. This is the fascinating thing though. This is part of your story that I really like is there's a lot of talented musicians or artists or athletes or just talented, smart people at different things who don't go to the station. They, yeah. they, they take the classes, they work at 4 AM at the coffee shop, working with their friends on projects. They do their art in their living room. They do these things, but they don't put it out there. They don't risk it to that extent. And just that one extra step that you took, it's like, I showed up and no one was there. I showed up the next day and no one was there, but I decided to stick around. Then I told the guy, Hey, let them know I'm outside. I'll be here. And then you waited. Like you, you took an extra step that was unconventional at that time. My girlfriend, she's done over 40 movies. She's a, she's done a, a ton of movies in Mexico and also in the U S but she has a similar story where she was like, I didn't know how to get into acting, but I just showed up to the casting place and I just said, Hey, I, I think I'm going to be great for a movie. And here's my paper. Here's my headshot, whatever. And just talk to everyone. And just said, hey, do you have anything that I can do a casting for? If she didn't show up for that, she wouldn't have landed in like her first big movie and then all the other things that came from that because she showed up to the, the office, the casting, without unannounced. And I think a lot of people don't show up unannounced. Showing up, is it's about seven or eight tenths of whatever it is you're trying to do. You right. just have to show up. Because you had the talent for years. Yeah, you, you had you were the funny. You're like, yeah, he would have finally figured it out and landed somewhere, but maybe you wouldn't have if you didn't push yourself out there in that way. If you didn't show up to the the station. Yeah, I was never that kind of guy. I was not. I was not proactive. I was kind of low self esteem, and I just kind of kept quiet and stuff. And I, I didn't put myself out there. Um, That's inspiring. So you did. I didn't do it, but I did it this time. And, and you met Jimmy, and look what happened from there. It's amazing. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. It's just it's a journey, man. Adam, I appreciate your time here. I've got a couple uh, questions that I ask everyone at the end. Before I ask them, I would just want to tell people to make sure they check out your show on AdamCorolla dot com. I think you got your tour dates on there. You got your podcast information. You got all the stuff you're working on there. Um, uh, I appreciate you having me on your show. I thought it was a lot of fun. It's just a funny time and everything that you guys talk about over there. So thanks for having me on your show. Sure. And I um, want people to follow that Adam Carolla show over on podcasts and check out your tour. If you thought this was interesting and funny and, you know, all that stuff, make sure to check out your website and check out your tour. Is there anywhere else we can send people to today to support and serve you? Uh, no. AdamCarolla.com is where all the info is. Yeah. That's great. Um, I appreciate your honesty. I want to acknowledge you for your realness and your truth and sharing just all the lessons in the journey. You've been in this game for a long time. You've seen people come and go. You've gone through ups and downs. And I just appreciate your consistency. You show up, you work hard. Um, you know, some people love you, some people don't like you, but it sounds like you like you, which I think is good. It's like you- <laughs> I'm agnostic <laughs> on myself, but and, and I just realize my strengths and my foibles. Yeah. You know, and I just, I, you should be realistic with yourself. Otherwise, sure. you're going to get your okay. Sure. But you also realize, you're like, oh, this might be a little, but this is who I am. And this is, you know, but I'm trying to be a good guy. So I just appreciate the realness uh, of you being who you say you are. Um, and I acknowledge you for that. I acknowledge you for really leading the way in an industry that I, I, I felt like I was an early adopter in podcasting. But I remember seeing you and Rogan was really in some random tech, you know, podcast early on that were leading the way. And so I really acknowledge you for inspiring me for, you know, seeing what's possible in the world of podcasting, seeing what's possible to share my voice in my own unique way. And there was only a few people that were doing that and that was you. So I really acknowledge you for that, that, uh, model that you had. Um, this is a question I ask everyone towards the end. Um, 
two final questions that I ask everyone towards the end. One is called the three truths. So this is a hypothetical scenario. You can answer it however you like, but I would like you to imagine that it's, you get to live as long as you want, but it's the last day in your life. You get to uh, experience and accomplish everything you want for as many years as possible, but then it's the last day. And for whatever reason on this last day, hypothetical scenario, you've got to take all of your content with you. So books, podcasts, shows, there's no one has access to your content anymore or anything you've shared, but you get to leave behind three lessons to the world that you feel like, all right, this, this is all they have of my content. I'm going to share these three lessons. I call it the three truths. What would those three truths be for you? Uh, whatever damage happens in your life or negative, negative things that happen in your life, it will most likely be self-inflicted. Most everyone I know who's really had some bad times, it's, it's all been either directly or indirectly their own doing. So you do a lot of externalizing, realize when stuff happens, there's a, if not direct, indirect path right back to you and your actions. So understand that. Um, there's really almost no such thing as like literally just, I was just sitting in my car and a drunk driver plowed into me. There's, there's something that you could have been doing to, to avoid that in some way, even if it seems totally random. So kind of internalize that and, and use it is, is one. Uh, the other is, uh, the aforementioned Jimmy lesson, just be generous and don't be generous because you're generous, be generous because you could be, do it because you're a narcissist. I mean, he, Jimmy's a narcissist, he's not magnanimous. He's, he wants what's he wants people to think of him and go, wow, I love that guy or owe that guy my career. Or, I owe that guy. You know, I want to help that guy. He likes it. He, it's healthy. Like it, it's fine. It's fine to, um, go, I want to do this and don't look at it as being sort of out of pocket. It's you, you pay for dinner a couple of times and then you, your dinner gets paid for for in perpetuity. So, you know, be, be that. Um, and then I guess, um, simple test, uh, would be the phone ring, uh, identification test, which is when the phone rings, start hearing it. <laughs> the phone in literally the just started ringing right when you said that. When the phone rings, and your name comes up and whomever sees it, what do they think? Because we've all had that person or people where like the phone rings and you see it and you're like, I'm just not really up to this right now. Or what do they want? They want something. I can't deal with this person. And then there's people you go, oh, cool. Oh, good. I get to, this person's calling. I get to talk to this person. What emotion do you elicit from others if your phone, if your name is popping up on their phone, what is their impulse going to be? And, and, and the freest, you know, the freest anyone will be is just go, oh, that's you. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's happening? You know, like It's, it's a, it's a kind of interesting metaphor because we, we all have a scale. We have the people in our lives where they call, they go, oh, good. And then there's the people at the bottom where you're like this, I'm not <laughs> picking that phone up. And then there are the ones like in the middle where you're like, depends on your mood. Yeah. yeah they would, I know I'm not up to this. I'll call them back or, or whatever. Like you got to figure out where you rank yeah, and then try to adjust your ranking. You can be as funny as you want, but if you don't know downstage, stage left, you know, uh, if you, you're not composed yeah. on stage or you don't know how to put together a set put, or put yeah. stuff set together, you know, to do anything, then, then don't kid yourself, pardon the pun. So I was right. like, I got to go get some 
training. 